Thomas Jefferson, April 13, 1743 to July 4, 1826, was an American statesman, diplomat, lawyer, architect, philosopher, and founding father who served as the third president of the United States from 1801 to 1809. He was the primary author of the Declaration of Independence. Following the American Revolutionary War and prior to becoming president in 1801, Jefferson was the nation's first U.S. Secretary of State under George Washington and then the nation's second vice president under John Adams. As president, Jefferson assertively defended the nation's shipping and trade interests against Barbary pirates and aggressive British trade policies. Beginning in 1803, he promoted a Western expansionist policy with the Louisiana Purchase, which doubled the nation's geographic size. To make room for settlement, Jefferson began the process of Indian tribal removal from the newly acquired territory. As a result of peace negotiations with France, Jefferson was able to reduce military forces and expenditures. In his second presidential term, Jefferson was beset by difficulties at home, including the trial of his former vice president Aaron Burr. In 1807, American foreign trade was diminished when Jefferson implemented the Embargo Act to defend the nation's industries from British threats to U.S. shipping. Here are some of his most famous quotes. The last hope of human liberty in this world rests on us. Delay is preferable to error. Until we stop harming all other living beings, we are still savages. No freeman shall be debarred the use of arms. I tremble for my country when I reflect that God is just, that his justice cannot sleep forever. Slavery is an abomination and must be loudly proclaimed as such, but I own that I nor any other man has any immediate solution to the problem. A lawyer without books would be like a workman without tools. To compel a man to furnish funds for the propagation of ideas he disbelieves and abhors is sinful and tyrannical. The God who gave us life, gave us liberty at the same time. The Bible makes the best people in the world. A little rebellion now and then, is a medicine necessary for the sound health of government. All the states but our own are sensible that no leg is power. It does me no injury for my neighbor to say there are twenty gods or no god. That government is the strongest of which every man feels himself a part. I think we have more machinery of government than is necessary, too many parasites living on the labor of the industrious. I believe that banking institutions are more dangerous to our liberties than standing armies. What country can preserve its liberties if its rulers are not warned from time to time that their people preserve the spirit of resistance? Let them take arms. Dependence leads to subservience. I have sworn upon the altar of God eternal, hostility against every form of tyranny over the mind of men. It is the old practice of despots to use a part of the people to keep the rest in order. May I never get too busy in my own affairs that I fail to respond to the needs of others with kindness and compassion. If we are to guard against ignorance and remain free, it is the responsibility of every American to be informed. Educate and inform the whole mass of the people. They are the only sure reliance for the preservation of our liberty. He who knows nothing is closer to the truth than he whose mind is filled with falsehoods and errors. The Bible is the cornerstone of liberty. When tyranny becomes law, rebellion becomes duty. There is no justification for taking away individuals' freedom in the guise of public safety. The issue today is the same as it has been throughout all history, whether men shall be allowed to govern himself or be ruled by a small elite. When the people are afraid of the government, that's tyranny. But when the government is afraid of the people, that's liberty. A true patriot will defend his country from its government. When you abandon freedom to achieve security, you lose both and deserve neither. The end of democracy and the defeat of the American Revolution will occur when government falls into the hands of lending institutions and moneyed incorporations. To learn, you have to listen. To improve, you have to try. Evil triumphs when good men do nothing. What we learn to do, we learn by doing. It is more honorable to repair a wrong than to persist in it. Let your gun therefore be your constant companion of your walks. I find that the harder I work, the more luck I seem to have. He who knows best knows how little he knows. Men of quality are not threatened by women of equality. The men who would choose security over freedom deserves neither. 
The advertisement is the most truthful part of a newspaper. A private central bank issuing the public currency is a greater menace to the liberties of the people than a standing army. We must not let our rulers load us with perpetual debt. The press is impotent when it abandons itself to falsehood. Free men do not ask permission to bear arms. A well-informed citizenry is the best defense against tyranny. Peace is that brief glorious moment in history when everybody stands around reloading. The purpose of government is to enable the people of a nation to live in safety and happiness. Government exists for the interests of the governed, not for the governors. The reason that Christianity is the best friend of government is because Christianity is the only religion that changes the heart. Equal rights for all, special privileges for none. To consider judges as the ultimate arbiters of all constitutional questions is a very dangerous doctrine indeed, and one which would place us under the despotism of an oligarchy. I never considered a difference of opinion in politics, in religion, in philosophy, as cause for withdrawing from a friend. The tree of liberty must be refreshed from time to time with the blood of patriots and tyrants. Laws that forbid the carrying of arms disarm only those who are neither inclined nor determined to commit crimes. Democracy is 51% of the people taking away the rights of the other 49%. The government you elect is the government you deserve. The worst day in a man's life is when he sits down and begins thinking about how he can get something for nothing. Honesty is the first chapter in the Book of Wisdom. The course of history shows that as a government grows, liberty decreases. The greatest calamity which could befall us would be submission to a government of unlimited powers. The man who reads nothing at all is better educated than the man who reads nothing but newspapers. Does the government fear us? Or do we fear the government? When the people fear the government, tyranny has found victory. The federal government is our servant, not our master. I prefer dangerous freedom over peaceful slavery. Experience hath shown that even under the best forms of government those entrusted with power have, in time, and by slow operations, perverted it into tyranny. Our liberty depends on the freedom of the press, and that cannot be limited without being lost. Rebellion to tyranny is obedience to God. In matters of style, swim with the current, in matters of principle, stand like a rock. No generation has a right to contract debts greater than can be paid off during the course of its own existence. Difference of opinion leads to inquiry, and inquiry to the truth. The cornerstone of democracy rests on the foundation of an educated electorate. The constitutions of most of our states assert that all power is inherent in the people, that, it is their right and duty to be at all times armed. The federal government is our servant, not our master. No government should be without critics. If its intentions are good then it has nothing to fear from criticism. My God! How little do my countrymen know what precious blessings they are in possession of, and which no other people on earth enjoy. The contest is not between us and them, but between good and evil, and if those who would fight evil adopt the ways of evil, evil wins. I have the consolation of having added nothing to my private fortune during my public service, and of retiring with hands clean as they are empty. For a people who are free, and who mean to remain so, a well-organized and armed militia is their best security. Nothing gives one person so much advantage over another as to remain always cool and unruffled under all circumstances. Nothing can stop the man with the right mental attitude from achieving his goal, nothing on earth can help the man with the wrong mental attitude. Bigotry is the disease of ignorance, of morbid minds, enthusiasm of the free and buoyant. Education and free discussion are the antidotes of both. We must not let our rulers load us with perpetual debt. If the children are untaught, their ignorance and vices will in future life cost us much dearer in their consequences than it would have done in their correction by a good education. Had the doctrines of Jesus been preached always as pure as they came from his lips, the whole civilized world would now have been Christians. I hold the precepts of Jesus as delivered by himself, to be the most pure, benevolent and sublime which have ever been preached to men. Governments constantly choose between telling lies and fighting wars, with the end result always being the same. One will always lead to the other. 
Men as well as rivers grow crooked by following the path of least resistance. By oft repeating an untruth, men come to believe it themselves. It is always better to have no ideas than false ones, to believe nothing, than to believe what is wrong. I would rather be exposed to the inconveniences attending too much liberty than those attending too small a degree of it. The central bank is an institution of the most deadly hostility existing against the principles and form of our constitution. Where the press is free and every man able to read, all is safe. Christianity neither is, nor ever was a part of the common law. I tolerate with the utmost latitude the right of others to differ from me in opinion without imputing to them criminality. Say nothing of my religion. It is known to God and myself alone. To preserve our independence, we must not let our rulers load us with perpetual debt. We must make our election between economy and liberty, or profusion, and servitude. When angry count to ten before you speak. If very angry, count to one hundred. One man with courage is a majority. There is nothing more unequal than the equal treatment of unequal people. The policy of the American government is to leave their citizens free, neither restraining nor aiding them in their pursuits. Every citizen should be a soldier. This was the case with the Greeks and Romans, and must be that of every free state. A society that will trade a little liberty for a little order will lose both, and deserve neither. A democratic society depends upon an informed and educated citizenry. The only security of all is in a free press. The constitutional freedom of religion is the most inalienable and sacred of all human rights. It takes time to persuade men to do even what is for their own good. The greatest good we can do our country is to heal its party divisions and make them one people. Leave no authority existing not responsible to the people. Timid men prefer the calm of despotism to the tempestuous sea of liberty. The cost of freedom is eternal vigilance. We will be soldiers, so our sons may be farmers, so their sons may be artists. The chief purpose of government is to protect life. Abandon that and you have abandoned all. Whensoever the general government assumes undelegated powers, its acts are unauthoritative, void, and of no force. Were we directed from Washington when to sow and when to reap, we should soon want bread. An honest man can feel no pleasure in the exercise of power over his fellow citizens. An act of the Congress of the United States, which assumes powers, not delegated by the Constitution, is not law, but is altogether void and of no force. Our country is now taking so steady a course as to show by what road it will pass to destruction, to wit, by consolidation of power first, and then corruption, its necessary consequence. It is in our lives and not our words that our religion must be read. If a nation expects to be ignorant and free, in a state of civilization, it expects what never was and never will be. Beer, if drank with moderation, softens the temper, cheers the spirit, and promotes health. It is every American's right and obligation to read and interpret the Constitution for himself. It is neither wealth nor splendor, but tranquility and occupation which give you happiness. Taste cannot be controlled by law. We must resist at all costs any attempt to regulate our individual freedoms and to legislate our personal moralities. Our citizens may be deceived for a while, and have been deceived, but as long as the presses can be protected, we may trust to them for light. The spirit of resistance to government is so valuable on certain occasions that I wish it to be always kept alive. The will of the people is the only legitimate foundation of any government, and to protect its free expression should be our first object. The care of human life and happiness, and not their destruction, is the first and only object of good government. Every people may establish what form of government they please, and change it as they please, the will of the nation being the only thing essential. Whenever you are to do a thing, though it can never be known but to yourself, ask yourself how you would act were all the world looking at you, and act accordingly. The result of your fifty or sixty years of religious reading in the four words, be just and good, is that in which all our inquiries must end. The whole art of government consists in the art of being honest.
Whenever a man has cast a longing eye on offices, a rottenness begins in his conduct. Question with boldness even the existence of a god, because, if there be one, he must more approve of the homage of reason, than that of blindfolded fear. Never use two words when one will do. Were parties here divided merely by a greediness for office, to take a part with either would be unworthy of a reasonable or moral man. The authors of the Gospels were unlettered and ignorant men and the teachings of Jesus have come to us mutilated, misstated and unintelligible. The true foundation of republican government is the equal right of every citizen in his person and property and in their management. I believe the states can best govern our home concerns, and the general government our foreign ones. Do not bite at the bait of pleasure, till you know there is no hook beneath it. Those who don't read the newspapers are better off than those who do insofar as those who know nothing are better off than those whose heads are filled with half-truths and lies. Whenever the people are well informed, they can be trusted with their own government. Paul was the first corrupter of the doctrines of Jesus. If ever this vast country is brought under a single government, it will be one of the most extensive corruption. None but an armed nation can dispense with a standing army. To keep ours armed and disciplined is therefore at all times important. An honest heart being the first blessing, a knowing head is the second. I prefer the tumult of liberty to the quiet of servitude. Enlighten the people generally, and tyranny and oppressions of body and mind will vanish like evil spirits at the dawn of day. The most sacred of the duties of a government is to do equal and impartial justice to all its citizens. It is error alone which needs the support of government. Truth can stand by itself. Not less than two hours a day should be devoted to exercise. Hemp is of first necessity to the wealth and protection of the country. One never really knows how much one has been touched by a place until one has left it. The dead should not rule the living. An elective despotism was not the government we fought for. The liberty of speaking and writing guards our other liberties. Ridicule is the only weapon which can be used against unintelligible propositions. For here we are not afraid to follow truth wherever it may lead. Is it less dishonest to do what is wrong because it is not expressly prohibited by written law? Let us hope our moral principles are not yet in that stage of degeneracy. Do you want to know who you are? Don't ask. Act. Action will delineate and define you. I have not observed men's honesty to increase with their riches. Walking is the best possible exercise. Habituate yourself to walk very far. A properly functioning democracy depends on an informed electorate. I have lived temperately, I double the doctor's recommendation of a glass and a half wine each day and even treble it with a friend. Honesty is the first chapter in the Book of Wisdom. Let it be our endeavor to merit the character of a just nation. War is as much a punishment to the punisher as to the sufferer. I am not among those who fear the people. They, and not the rich, are a dependence for continued freedom. No man shall be compelled to frequent or support any religious worship, place, or ministry whatsoever. It behooves every man who values liberty of conscience for himself, to resist invasions of it in the case of others, or their case may, by change of circumstances, become his own. An informed citizenry is the only true repository of the public will. Whenever you do a thing, act as if all the world were watching. When wrongs are pressed because it is believed they will be borne, resistance becomes morality. Men is not made for the state but the state for men and it derives its just powers only from the consent of the governed. A little rebellion is a good thing. Without virtue, happiness cannot be. Nothing can now be believed which is seen in a newspaper. Truth itself becomes suspicious by being put into that polluted vehicle. Commerce with all nations, alliance with none, should be our motto. I hold it that a little rebellion now and then is a good thing, and as necessary in the political world as storms in the physical. All authority belongs to the people. In questions of power let no more be heard of confidence in men, but bind him down from mischief with chains of the constitution. Religions are all alike, founded upon fables and mythologies. 
Every generation needs a new revolution. Of all the cankers of human happiness none corrodes with so silent, yet so baneful an influence, as indolence. In every country and in every age, the priest has been hostile to liberty. He is always in alliance with the despot, abetting his abuses in return for protection to his own. Experience demands that man is the only animal which devours his own kind, for I can apply no milder term to the general prey of the rich on the poor. Never spend your money before you have earned it. A bill of rights is what the people are entitled to against every government, and what no just government should refuse, or rest on inference. Paper is poverty, it is only the ghost of money, and not money itself. Paper money is liable to be abused, has been, is, and forever will be abused, in every country in which it is permitted. Men fight for freedom, then they begin to accumulate laws to take it away from themselves. Don't talk about what you have done or what you are going to do. The glow of one warm thought is to me worth more than money. Where thought is free in its range, we need never fear to hazard what is good in itself. When earth is rich it bids defiance to droughts, yields in abundance and of the best quality. The God who gave us life gave us liberty. Can the liberties of a nation be secure when we have removed a conviction that these liberties are the gift of God? A prince whose character is thus marked by every act which may define a tyrant, is unfit to be the ruler of a people who mean to be free. Difference of opinion is helpful in religion. Knowledge indeed is a desirable, a lovely possession. An informed citizenry is at the heart of a dynamic democracy. The constitution is a mere thing of wax in the hands of the judiciary, which they may twist and shape into any form they please. Those who labor in the earth are the chosen people of God. I prefer to be remembered for what I have done for others, not what others have done for me. A walk about Paris will provide lessons in history, beauty, and in the point of life. Without health there is no happiness. An attention to health, then, should take the place of every other object. The wise know too well their weakness to assume infallibility, and he who knows most knows best how little he knows. I never will, by any word or act, bow to the shrine of intolerance or admit a right of inquiry into the religious opinions of others. Let our countrymen know that the people alone can protect us against these evils of misgovernment. I apprehend, that the total abandonment of the principle of rotation in the offices of president and senator will end in abuse. The same prudence which in private life would forbid our paying our own money for unexplained projects, forbids it in the dispensation of the public monies. A mind always employed is always happy. This is the true secret, the grand recipe, for felicity. Our rulers can have authority over such natural rights only as we have submitted to them. Agriculture, manufactures, commerce, and navigation, the four pillars of our prosperity, are the most thriving when left most free to individual enterprise. If ever there was a holy war, it was that which saved our liberties and gave us independence. The majority, oppressing an individual, is guilty of a crime, abuses its strength, and by acting on the law of the strongest breaks up the foundations of society. Ignorance of the law is no excuse in any country. If it were, the laws would lose their effect, because it can always be pretended. The several states composing the United States of America are not united on the principle of unlimited submission to their general government. The press is the best instrument for enlightening the mind of men, and improving him as a rational, moral, and social being. We are the friends of liberty everywhere, but the guaranters of only our own. The multiplication of public offices, increase of expense beyond income, growth, and entailment of a public debt are indications soliciting the employment of the pruning knife. It is reasonable that everyone who asks justice should do justice. How much pain they have cost us, the evils which have never happened. Nothing can now be believed that is seen in a newspaper. A coward is much more exposed to quarrels than a man of spirit. A rigid economy of the public contributions and absolute interdiction of all useless expenses will go far towards keeping the government honest and unoppressive. No society can make a perpetual constitution. The earth belongs always to the living generation. That liberty is pure, which is to go to all, and not to the few or the rich alone. New York, like London, seems to be a cloacina, toilet, 
of all the depravities of human nature. Love your neighbor as yourself and your country more than yourself. Coffee, the favorite drink of the civilized world. Every government degenerates when trusted to the rulers of the people alone. The people themselves are its only safe depositories. A morsel of genuine history is a thing so rare as to be always valuable. Leave all the afternoon for exercise and recreation, which are as necessary as reading. I will rather say more necessary because health is worth more than learning. I am opposed to any form of tyranny over the mind of men. Never fear the want of business. A man who qualifies himself well for his calling, never fails of employment. There is not one redeeming feature in our superstition of Christianity. It has made one half the world fools, and the other half hypocrites. The natural progress of things is for liberty to yield and government to gain ground. Good wine is a necessity of life for me. I have ever deemed it more honorable and more profitable, too, to set a good example than to follow a bad one. If we can but prevent the government from wasting the labors of the people, under the pretense of taking care of them, they must become happy. I view great cities as pestilential to the morals, the health, and the liberties of men. Never trouble another for what you can do yourself. The man who stops advertising to save money is like the man who stops the clock to save time. He, who steadily observes those moral precepts in which all religions concur, will never be questioned at the gates of heaven as to the dogmas in which they all differ. Nobody can acquire honor by doing what is wrong. One single object will merit the endless gratitude of the society, that of restraining the judges from usurping legislation. We never repent of having eaten too little. Bank paper must be suppressed, and the circulating medium must be restored to the nation to whom it belongs. Religious leaders will always avail themselves of public ignorance for their own purpose. The people are not always well informed, but it's better that they have misconceptions that make them restless than that they be lethargic for lethargy and the people means death for republics. Scenes are now to take place as will open the eyes of credulity and of insanity itself, to the dangers of a paper medium abandoned to the discretion of avarice and of swindlers. Our civil rights have no dependence upon our religious opinions more than our opinions in physics or geometry. Wine brightens the life and thinking of anyone. Do not neglect your music. It will be a companion which will sweeten many hours of life to you. Lethargy is the forerunner of death to the public liberty. Peace, commerce and honest friendship with all nations, entangling alliances with none. Peace and friendship with all mankind is our wisest policy, and I wish we may be permitted to pursue it. No provision in our constitution ought to be dearer to men than that which protects the rights of conscience against the enterprises of the civil authority. The most valuable of all talents is that of never using two words when one will do. A strong body makes the mind strong. No nation is drunken where wine is cheap, and none sober where the dearness of wine substitutes ardent spirits as the common beverage. One loves to possess arms, though they hope never to have occasion for them. I own that I am not a friend to a very energetic government. It is always oppressive. Nothing but free argument, raillery, and even ridicule will preserve the purity of religion. If I had to choose between government and a free press, I would choose a free press. A free people, claim, their rights as derived from the laws of nature, and not as the gift of their chief magistrate. It is strangely absurd to suppose that a million of human beings, collected together, are not under the same moral laws which bind each of them separately. Exercise and application produce order in our affairs, health of body, cheerfulness of mind, and these make us precious to our friends. I was bold in the pursuit of knowledge, never fearing to follow truth and reason to whatever results they led, and bearding every authority which stood in their way. Agriculture is our wisest pursuit, because it will in the end contribute most to real wealth, good morals, and happiness. The Son, my almighty physician. The most uninformed mind with a healthy body is happier than the wisest valetudinarian. Most men die at age 25, but aren't buried until 70. A mind always employed is always happy. Take more pleasure in giving what is best to another than in having it for yourself, 
and then all the world will love you. Too old to plant trees for my own gratification, I shall do it for my posterity. Man is an imitative animal. This quality is the germ of all education in him. From his cradle to his grave he is learning to do what he sees others do. Self-love is the sole antagonist of virtue, leading us constantly by our propensities to self-gratification in violation of our moral duties to others. It should be our endeavor to cultivate the peace and friendship of every nation, even of that which has injured us most. No man has a natural right to commit aggression on the equal rights of another, and this is all from which the laws ought to restrain him. The day is not distant when we must bear and adopt, the abolition of slavery, or worse will follow. Was the government to prescribe to us our medicine and diet, our bodies would be in such keeping as our souls are now. I like the dreams of the future better than the history of the past. A nation's best defense is an educated citizenry. If I had to choose between government without newspapers, and newspapers without government, I wouldn't hesitate to choose the latter. The plow is to the farmer what the wand is to the sorcerer. Its effect is really like sorcery. What has been the effect of, religious, coercion? To make one half the world fools, and the other half hypocrites. To support roguery and error all over the earth. Should things go wrong at any time, the people will set them to rights by the peaceable exercise of their elective rights. The four horse of this frightful team is public debt. Taxation follow that, and in its turn wretchedness and oppression. Christian creeds and doctrines, the clergy's own fatal inventions, through all the ages has made of Christendom a slaughterhouse, and divided it into sects of an extinguishable hatred for one another. It is an insult to our citizens to question whether they are rational beings or not, and blasphemy against religion to suppose it cannot stand the test of truth and reason. All persons shall have full and free liberty of religious opinion nor shall any be compelled to frequent or maintain any religious institution. The functionaries of every government have propensities to command at will the liberty and property of their constituents. I will not believe our labors are lost. I shall not die without a hope that light and liberty are on a steady advance. A nation, as a society, forms a moral person, and every member of it is personally responsible for his society. The Christian God is a being of terrific character, cruel, vindictive, capricious, and unjust. I consider trial by jury as the only anchor ever yet imagined by men, by which a government can be held to the principles of its constitution. Man, once surrendering his reason, has no remaining guard against absurdities the most monstrous. Pride costs us more than hunger, thirst, and cold. No nation was ever drunk when wine was cheap. Preach, my dear sir, a crusade against ignorance, establish and improve the law for educating the common people. He does most in God's great world who does his best in his own little world. Friendship is but another name for an alliance with the follies and the misfortunes of others. Our own share of miseries is sufficient, why enter then as volunteers into those of another? Games played with the ball, and others of that nature, are too violent for the body and stamp no character on the mind. Erecting the wall of separation between church and state is absolutely essential in a free society. There is an artificial aristocracy founded on wealth and birth, without either virtue or talents. The artificial aristocracy is a mischievous ingredient in government, and provision should be made to prevent its ascendancy. Amplification is the vice of modern oratory. It is an insult to an assembly of reasonable men, disgusting and revolting instead of persuading. Speech is measured by the hour, die by the hour. The past stays put, I just keep moving farther away from it. Truth and reason are eternal. They have prevailed. And they will eternally prevail, however, in times and places they may be overborne for a while by violence, military, civil, or ecclesiastical. The abolition of domestic slavery is the great object of desire in those colonies, where it was unhappily introduced in their infant state. To take a single step beyond the boundary specially drawn around the powers of Congress is to take possession of a boundless field of power, no longer susceptible to definition. If the freedom of religion, guaranteed to us by law in theory, 
can ever rise in practice under the overbearing inquisition of public opinion, then and only then will truth prevail over fanaticism. No government ought to be without censors, and where the press is free no one ever will. It is a melancholy truth that a suppression of the press could not more completely deprive the nation of its benefits than is done by its abandoned prostitution to falsehood. It is part of the American character to consider nothing as desperate. It is not by the consolidation or concentration of powers but by their distribution that good government is affected. Every gentleman plays billiards, but someone who plays billiards too well is no gentleman. Let the eye of vigilance never be closed. The only way to win money out of a casino is to own one. Free government is founded in jealousy, and not in confidence, it is jealousy, and not confidence, which prescribes limited constitutions, to bind down those whom we are obliged to trust with power. It is incumbent on every generation to pay its own debts as it goes. A principle which if acted on would save one half the wars of the world. Ignorance and bigotry, like other insanities, are incapable of self-government. As for what is not true, you will always find abundance in the newspapers. Material abundance without character is the surest way to destruction. Wine from long habit has become an indispensable for my health. The Constitution has erected no such single tribunal, knowing that to whatever hands confided, with the corruptions of time and party, its members would become despots. While the farmer holds the title to the land, actually, it belongs to all the people because civilization itself rests upon the soil. The protection of our citizens, the spirit and honor of our country, require that force should be interposed to a certain degree. Rogueries, absurdities and untruths were perpetrated upon the teachings of Jesus by a large band of dupes and importers led by Paul, the first great corrupter of the teaching of Jesus. Civil officials have no business meddling in private religious affairs.